Hey everyone, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a beginner's look, kind of an introduction to many to many relationships and how to use them inside of Canvas apps. So let's dive right in. I've got a very simple solution here with a student table and a class table. If you've never come across a many-to-many -many relationship in the wild and you're not sure how to identify one, the easiest way to think about it, I think, is in terms of school, right? Everyone has been to school, probably. So this one's kind of an easy one to understand. So let's say you have a bunch of students and you have a bunch of classes. Now, if we were to add a lookup column to the student table, that would create a one-to-many relationship between the classes and that student. So each student can only be assigned to one class, but in the real world, that's not really how it works. You have one student that has many classes throughout the day. They could have science and math and art and technology, all these different classes, but those classes could also be assigned to other students. So you've got many students that all could relate to many classes. So that is the situation that we're dealing with today. It is a classic many-to-many -many relationship. So let's go and go into our Canvas app and take a look at what we've got so far. So I, all I have right here is just one screen to simply edit and add students and edit and add classes. So if I go into play mode here and I wanna add another student, I'll just add myself. So we've got Nate Hallowell. So Nate is now in the student table and here we've got our class table. We've got science, math, English, art, and technology. I think that's good for now. This form works the same way. But now let's say we want this Canvas app to be sort of like a student management or a class management tool for our teachers or for our school administration. So what I wanna do next is I wanna have a screen where I can list all of the students and all of the classes and I want to say, hey, for this student, this student has this class, this class, and this class. But to do that, remember, we don't really have a, a way right now to relate these students to one another. Now, if you've only used lookup columns in the past, then you may have been spoiled and you may have never manually added a relationship between tables before, but it's very simple to do. Whenever you add that lookup column, it automatically creates the one-to-many relationship for you. But now what we need to do is we need to go into our solution where we have our tables and we need to manually add this relationship. A many-to-many -many relationship kind of acts like a virtual table in the background and it stores which classes and which students are related to one another. But there is no physical table we can go in and manipulate. Uh, after we discuss the many-to-many -many relationship and we create one, I think it'll also be helpful to spend a couple minutes and talk about junction tables or joiner tables at the end of this video. But for right now, let's just go and create the many-to-many -many relationship. So I'm gonna start with the student table. It really doesn't matter which table you start with. Um, so I'm gonna go to the student table and now that I'm in the context of this table in my solution, I'm gonna to go to new and I'm gonna to go to relationship. And here we have to decide, is this a many to one, a one to many, or a many to many? So we wanna do a many to many relationship and it's already showing us uh, the student table. So that's the, the table we're starting with. And now we need to say which table has the related items that we want to create this many to many relationship with. So we just need to put in the classes table. And we'll take a look here. It's going to produce a relationship called student to class. This M2M, this is my, my publisher for this solution, many to many. So I've got student to class and the relationship table name is student to class. So we'll go ahead and click done. And the nice thing about Canvas apps is if I am in a gallery and I want to show all of the classes that a student is related to, I can actually kind of use that as a column now. I can say this item dot classes and that will produce a table of all the related records for me. And there we go. Our many to many relationship has been established. So let's go back to our Canvas app. I'm just going to refresh the students table and I'm going to refresh the classes table. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, there's many ways you could do it, right? You could do two galleries side by side with check boxes. So I'm gonna go with just a simple vertical gallery and this will contain my students and I'll change the layout here to just be title because I don't have really any extra columns in this student table. So we'll move this over here 
and I'm going to insert another gallery. And we'll make this title layout as well. And this will be my classes. Perfect. Now we need some sort of control in this gallery to select these classes and tie them to a student. And to, uh, to tie them to a student, we're going to be using what's called the relate function. And to remove that relationship, we're going to be using the unrelate function. So similar to a patch statement where we're patching a record to a table, in this case, we're relating two records to this kind of virtual many to many table here. So I'll do that in this class table. I'm going to go in and I'll just insert a checkbox. And I'll move this over, I'll slide my class name over, I'll remove this label here. Perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect, but good enough. So now I want to, uh, the way I'm going to kind of control this is whatever student I have selected on, on check of these checkboxes will relate the classes that we want related to that student. So the first thing is, let's take care of the establishing the relationship between a class and a student. So I'm going to go to my checkbox, and I want to look at the on check and on uncheck properties. And we're going to look at the default property as well. So on check, what do we want to do? We want to relate Dave Davidson to science, or Dave Davidson to math, whatever checkbox we select. So on check, let's do a relate. And then there's two parameters here. What is the entity one or the first table? And then what is the second table uh, and what is the record in that table that we want to relate? So the entity one related table needs to be basically this gallery's selected item dot classes. That, that is that virtual table in the background. So I'm going to rename this here just to make this easier. I'm going to call gallery one. This will be G A L students and I think I have GAL students on my other screen so I'm going to call this GAL student management and this one I'm going to call GAL class management all right now back to this checkbox on check of this checkbox I want to relate GAL student management dot selected dot classes remember we didn't add a column called classes that classes represents the relationship between classes and students with that many to many relationship so that's my first parameter for the relate function the second parameter is the entity to record so the second entities record that we want to relate to our first record because we're referencing a record in the class table and we are in the context of the class table in this gallery all i need to say here is this item now the unrelate function is pretty much exactly the same parameters so i'm going to copy this whole inside uh, between the two parentheses and let's look at the on uncheck. So on uncheck, let's remove that relationship between Dave Davidson and science. So instead of relate, I'm going to unrelate. And close my parentheses. And then as a last step, just to test that this all works properly, let's go ahead and set the default value for this checkbox to be something like this item dot class, which would be the GUID, we'll say this item dot class is in Dave Davidson classes. So we'll go to the default property, and this is whether it is checked or not. This item, and because this table is called classes, the GUID column for this table is class. So we'll say this item dot class, and we see below it's telling us that is a GUID. And we want to say that is in 
our gal student management gallery dot selected so that's Dave Davidson and then we want to see if it's in gal student management dot selected dot classes that's our table and then we need to get it down to one column here so we need to say is in gal student management dot selected dot classes and that's a table showing all of the classes so we need to say dot class and IntelliSense for some reason does not pick it up but it is there so now we get no errors in here and it's going to default this checkbox to already be checked if that student is already in that class so let's test this out and see if that works so Dave Davidson has we'll say science math and art okay so we got no errors there so that relationship looks like it worked now let's see if it held by clicking on a different student okay now let's click back to Dave Davidson and we've got our three check marks beautiful so pretty simple let's test the unrelate function let's say you know instead of science maybe Dave Davidson dropped out of science in lieu of taking a technology class so we've got math art and technology click on a different student here we'll go back to Dave and Dave has math art and technology so it's very simple um, it's a little bit scary at first if you've never used them before but it's very very simple in uh, working with these many-to-many -many relationships in a canvas app now there's one more thing to think about if you are creating an application like this where you have students and classes and Many students could have many classes. Let's test this with another student, by the way. Let's say Roberta has math, English, and technology. We'll say Joanna has science, math, and English. And we'll say Nate uh, just has art and technology. Nate's kind of a slacker. So now as we click through, perfect. We can see all of the classes that these other students are part of. Art and technology for Nate same thing art and technology for Nate so the, the relate and unrelate is working very very well but if we're trying to mimic the real world as much as possible here if we're managing the classes and the students there's probably a bunch of additional metadata about that relationship such as for Nate Hallowell in the art class what's Nate's grade who's his teacher what period does he have that class right all this additional metadata about that relationship with a many-to-many -many relationship it just it says in the background okay Nate has these related classes right and this class has this re these related students so that that part of it is nice but as soon as you want to start adding extra metadata about that relationship you can't really do that with a many-to-many -many relationship so what a lot of developers will do is create what's called a junction table or a joiner table so what that is is basically a one-to-many relationship for each of these tables so we'll have a I don't know maybe we'll create a table called uh, student classes right and there will be a lookup column to student so creating a one-to-many relationship and there will be another lookup column to classes so another one-to-many relationship so if Nate has art and technology in that joiner table there would actually be two records for Nate it would be Nate Hallowell art Nate Hallowell technology then I can start to add all my additional metadata like what's what's the grade that Nate has in that class so let's let's go create that real quick just to show you how you would start it so I'm gonna go back to my solution I'm gonna go back to tables and let's do another new table this time we'll call this student class for the primary column I'll actually give that an, an auto number give that class ID go into columns first thing I'm gonna do because I always forget to do this I'm gonna go up to my class ID column I'm gonna change this to an auto number for the prefix we'll just do C and we'll save that and now to start this table the first thing we need to do is add our two lookup columns so one lookup column to the student and another lookup column to the class so do a new column 
This will be the student. And that is going to be a lookup to student. That's creating a one-to-many relationship between these two tables. And we'll do another new column. This will be the class. And that'll be a lookup to class. And then just for the purposes of demonstration, let's add one metadata column, and that will be the student's grade. So Nate Hallowell, art, and his grade in art. Nate Hallowell, technology, and his grade in technology. This will be, we'll just do a whole number just to keep it simple. You probably want to do a decimal in the real world. But we will save that. And there we go. Now we've got this junction table that is acting just like the virtual table that gets created with that many-to-many -many relationship. But now we can add our own additional metadata columns. And in your Canvas app, it would behave very similarly where you would have a gallery of all your students and then a gallery to the right of this student classes table. And you would filter that student classes table by the student that you have selected. And you could add things like their grade and all of the extra metadata that you have. Uh, instead of making this video like a, a one hour video on how to do both methods, now at least this should get you started with the many to many relationships and how to do that relate and unrelate function right inside of your Canvas app. Uh, hopefully it removed that fear a little bit. Maybe in the next video, we'll take a look at how to use this junction table in lieu of the many-to-many -many relationship inside of the Canvas app if, if people want to see that. So let us know. Put in the comments if you want another video on this topic. Uh, but in the next video, we'll do it maybe more on the junction table method versus the many-to-many -many relationship. So comment down below. Let us know what you'd like to see in the next one. And we'll see you then. Thanks so much, everyone.